welcome everybody. Come on in and have a seat. Just going to give it a few minutes because I know we have a lot of people popping in. Maggie, isn't it fun to see all these people that we know and people that we've that we've worked with over the years? It's so awesome. And as as you're coming in, please make sure that you are muted. And um, if you'd like to share your video, we'd love to see your pretty faces. Oh yeah, everybody. We're no judgment here about hair or what you're wearing. We just want to see you and have you be a part of us. You yep. can see us. We want to see you. We're all Girl Scouts, and we've been camping. <laughs> Yes, yes, we've been camping. <laughs> Maggie's right, we want you to settle in. We've got a, a great hour planned. So I wanna welcome everybody uh, to our annual meeting. Hello, Girl Scouts. Everybody sit back and enjoy. We've got a great video to start off our time together. We wanted to, uh, I think we're gonna start with the video. Why do I do Girl Scouts? Because of the girls, of course. I'm in Girl Scouts because it gives me opportunities I can't do otherwise. I joined Girl Scouts because I wanted to form meaningful relationships with the girls in my community. Girl Scouts has helped me learn how to be a better team player. I like Girl Scouts because of all the opportunities it gives me, but it also gives me a positive outlet to put all my energy into while I still get to help people, which honestly really means a lot to me. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Girl Scouting has impacted my life in many different ways, but some of the biggest takeaways I have are all of the important life skills I've learned, which range from first aid and building a fire all the way to like business, leadership, communication skills. I volunteer with Girl Scouts because I want to empower today's girls to be tomorrow's female leaders. There's a lot of fun going on in that video. We wanted to begin our time together with a reminder of why we're here, why we do what we do, all of us volunteering our time and talents and treasures because we're invested in building girls' courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. At Girl Scouts, we promise to live and abide by our promise and law. Let us now share reciting the promise and law together Please remain muted while you recite the promise in law, which will be led by Junior Girl Scout Mara Shefty of Troop 2340 in Cambridge. Mara? On my honor, I will try to serve the world in my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and, re and respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, and make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Oh my gosh, Mara, that was great. Thank you so much. What an unconventional conventional annual meeting we're sharing together. Thank you for joining us. This, uh, this event is just a, an indi indicative of what the last several months have been like. From the bottom of my heart, I hope that you find yourselves well and healthy and staying safe. We know that um, there's so much going on in the world today and um, we're going to share an hour together, grounding ourselves in Girl Scout values and celebrating. We're going to begin by celebrating um, the uh, girl, gold girls who have earned this and have waited quite a while for this special celebration as we recognize them. We look forward to taking care of the business of the council as well with elections of the board, Badgerland Council delegates, and National Council delegates 
there will be, as there always is, an update on council finances from our board treasurer. We're going to also have an overview of some of the highlights of this extraordinary year. The girls that will be celebrated today are uh, the Gold Award girls. There have been 11 Badgerland girls who have earned their Gold Award this year, and we're going to celebrate them by beginning watching a video, an overview of who they are and what they've accomplished. So my project was a homework and quiet space for an after school program. So my project was a homework and quiet space for an after school program. I thought this was something important that the kids should know. Oh gosh, I think I've always wanted to really earn my gold award. I saw a lot of the older Girl Scouts in my community doing all these gold star award, like awards and projects, and it was just a lot of fun. If there's one thing I would have done differently, it would have been to start the project at an earlier date. Even if it doesn't work out the first couple of times, you know, just go for it. It's, you're bound to find something that is important to you that you'll really stick with. Last bolt and that last screw and I took a step back and I looked at, you know, I looked at it done. I was like, wow. I learned that I'm definitely able to advocate for myself more than I thought I was going to be able to. Like I said, I've always been a really passionate, empathetic person. And I think this project just really helped me to show that and grow that part of myself. Just try it. There's nothing, there's no hurt in just trying it. Even if you don't complete it, you know that in your heart that you gave the effort at some point where you you started that process. And honestly, I was hooked from the moment I completely started going. So that's a taste of what's to come. Many of the gold award, award I'm struggling with that word. Many of the gold award girls are with us this evening and some could not attend. In fact, some are already at college. Um, it, but all of them have received special celebrations from Badgerland the last several months, including goodie bags and yard signs, uh, honor cords for the graduation uh, pictures, and of course, the hand delivery of their Gold Award pins. We will meet several Gold Award Girl Scouts this evening and ask her to share about her journey, and then we'll watch her get pinned. We're going to begin this evening with Carissa Adams, Carissa, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, Carissa. She and I had the opportunity to do a couple of Zoom TV interviews earlier this summer. Um, and from that, I have learned uh, a bit more about Carissa. I can tell you uh, she is passionate about camp and the out of doors. She is a great leader. Carissa, tell us a little bit about your project. My project was to build a natural playground at Pro State Park. So we used a bunch of materials that we sourced from around the park and we built a whole bunch of elements that kids can run around and have a lot of fun on. Well, that's so important. I think it's just such a great reminder today when we all wish we could be running around outside, um, how much we value that. Um, and I know that's super important to you and your loved ones. It looks like you have, um, you have your, uh, I'm going to presume your, your parents there behind you. Yeah, um, my parents are behind me. <laughs> excellent. Thanks, Mom and Dad. I know that it takes a team to support your daughter. Oh, got Sarah here too. Little sister. <laughs> little sister. Well, maybe little sister will earn her gold award as well. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. What an inspiration. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So what we're going to do um, is uh, Chris is going to be pinned. I believe that um, mom Sue is going to do the pinning. And I understand, Sue, that you too earned the highest award in Girl Scouting. Is that correct? I did. It's been just a couple of years since I did that, though. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Well, what an honor to have this be generational. Just a reminder on the Girl Scout uh, pinning, you uh, make the sign of the Girl Scouts uh, with your right hand, and then you shake with your left hand following the pinning. Okay, so go ahead, Sue, and, and uh, pin Carissa. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, let's thank you for oh thank you for sharing that moment with us and a round of applause. It'll be muted, but you know that we're that we're <laughs> celebrating with you. Thank you so much, Adams family. <laughs> I now invite Peyton Barber to join me. Hello. Hi, Peyton. We go a long ways back. Yes, we do. <laughs> Peyton was on the Youth Leadership Council for several years. I feel like I watched you grow up. Um, we were on uh, TV and radio together for yes. several times. Thank you for being a media girl. And you are now beginning your second year of college. Is that right? I am. I'm actually back in Florida right now for college. Well, you may or may not know that the goodie bag was delivered to your grandparents last week. Yes, yes. I heard from them. <laughs> okay, good, good. They are so proud of you. Thank you. I know, I know your mom is. I've met your mom, but uh, for several <laughs> times over the years. But it's nice to have a have a whole bunch of folks in your corner, and you clearly do. Let's hear yeah. about your project. So my project was to put together an event at my high school um, to do sort of like an adulting 101 program to get kids ready for their career or their college or wherever they end up after high school. Because um, a lot of kids don't really know like how to balance a checkbook, the difference between a credit union and a bank, like the kind of things you might want to know as you go out of uh, high school. So I created a program in my high school to help kids with that. And they ended up putting it in with the financial literacy class, which was super cool because that wasn't the idea at first, but that's where it ended up. And I am so happy that it was able to come true. That's a sustainable part of the Gold Award project, isn't it? Yes. Excellent. And I know you're also an athlete, so you juggled a lot of things as you were working on your Gold Award project. And just an encouragement to the girls that are listening, uh, you're leaders that step up that, that do this and, and you can do sports and school and still, uh, and still create this uh, amazing opportunity for others to grow through your Gold Award. We appreciate your passion, Peyton. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and I love that you did Adulting 101. Is there anybody there that's going to pin you? Uh, sadly, no, as okay. I actually, my vest is back home with my mom, but I hopefully will, as soon as I get home from college for winter, I will hopefully get pinned then. All right, well, and I hope you'll, you'll check, uh, check us out and stop by and say hello. Of course. <laughs> All right. And we begin, we begin the second year of school. With a big round of applause for you, Peyton. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Right. <laughs> okay. Before we move on, I'd like to acknowledge that we do have some Gold Award girls who did earn the gold in 2020 but couldn't join us this evening. And their names are Claire Cunningham, Krista Hutchinson, Alex Olson, and Alyssa Weir. So we celebrate them in abstentia, and I hope if you know them, you uh, make sure that you uh, share how proud you are. And I know that we've got a number of people on this uh, call this evening that are members of the Gold Award Committee and helped them, not just their parents, but volunteers that made it possible for them to move forward. Um, so shout out to the volunteers on the Gold Award Committee, the staff that support that, and of course their cheer squad uh, to make this all possible. We celebrate now Nadine Connell. Nadine's from Madison, and it's been uh, has been a long time coming for you to be pinned. Um, please unmute yourself, and uh, I want to hear about uh, about the Gaga Pit and your Gold Award project. Uh, so, I a Gaga Pit for uh, camp. It's you know a lot of the girls took camps, um, and I created a because I got a game, so I game, and so I made a page where anybody can join and anybody can Nadine, thanks. We're having a little bit of a challenge with your uh, technology, but I know that you um, uh, put together some Gaga pits. You made it a lot of fun for girls to share time together and get some exercise and have some teamwork. Um, and I understand that your sister is in the ninth grade and, um, and will be on the call with us too. So is she there? Yes. If we, 
Okay, she's there. Well, Nadine, I know that uh, you are uh, no doubt an inspiration to your little sister, Rochelle, and uh, we encourage um, you to, uh, to, to get pinned. Is there somebody there that can help you with that tonight? Yes. Okay. Oh, and Nadine, Nadine, this is Christy. I just want to say, turn on your camera so we can see you getting pinned. We turned it on because we were in trouble with the uh, streaming, but we'll turn it on for the pinning real quick and probably whip it off again. That'd be, that'd be great. There she is. Oh, I hope we can capture that uh, that video. Thank you. I know it's it's we have a lot of moving parts, and I appreciate the challenges of the technology. I'm so glad we could see that, and thank you, and uh, congratulations, Nadine. Our next honoree this evening is Rebecca Hose. Rebecca, it's great to see you. Um, boy, I've known you again through the uh, Youth Leadership Council, and I know you're uh, big into camp, and you helped with uh, camp. Uh, e. Howie this summer virtual. Um, so let's uh, let's hear from you. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, Good to so see you. Nice to see you too. Um, sorry. Okay. So for my project, I uh, redecorated one of the unused storage rooms at the after school program in my town to become a designated homework quiet space for the kids. And to go with that, I got NHS tutors from the high school to come over a couple of times a week. I did a presentation and I put together a little book of resources for the middle schoolers on how to handle more stress as they came into high school. And yeah, that's about it. What do you think was the biggest oh. aha that you had as you were working on your Gold Award project? Um, I mean, when you when I started it at first, I was like, man, there's a lot of work ahead of me and it felt like drudgery. But as we got more through it and things started coming together, it became a lot more exciting to see like what other things I could put together. Like right at the end, I wasn't gonna do it, but I made a website that anybody can look at to see like about my project and the resources I made and stuff. And that was just really fun. I think that's a great lesson of life. Sometimes when you start out, the road is really hard and it feels like a, a, sl a slog or drudgery, as you said. Um, and uh, yes, absolutely, you just gotta stick to it and then, and then at some point it becomes easier and more fulfilling, isn't that? You, you learned a really important lesson there. Cypher, you're getting a lot of uh, kudos on the chat line. You're gonna wanna catch those. Uh, Cypher's uh, Becca's camp name and um, so you've got a lot of fans that are congratulating you right now. Is that, is that, uh, is that your mom who's gonna pin you this evening? There is. That Excellent. Is. All righty. So uh, please go ahead and do that. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a special moment. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Okay. Best of luck to you. Keep in touch. Alex, Alex Janice, welcome to your night. I had the pleasure of connecting with Alex earlier this year when she joined one of our virtual programs to talk about her Gold Award project, and it's fascinating. Alex, I look forward to hearing from you. Hi. Uh, for my project, I donated specialized music players to an Alzheimer's care facility in my community. Uh, I made special playlists for each resident from music that they enjoyed in their life and I put them on special music players that are designed for people with Alzheimer's so they can play music and get a sense of independence that way. Um, yeah. We, we so appreciate you doing that on behalf of the, the people that are helped and their loved ones, that to know that their loved ones are in a little bit better place when they're listening to music as well. What, did, what, did, what was your biggest takeaway from your project? 
I think my biggest takeaway was how important listening can be uh, because I, I really do love to talk. Uh, <laughs> but through this project, I got a lot better at listening to people, not only the words that they say, but their body language, their facial expressions. Uh, and I think that that is a skill that I will continue to develop and continue to use for the rest of my life. I know when I heard you say that the first time, I was so impressed with your maturity um, and your aha, because it, lots of people take years and years, much longer than you, to learn how to be a good listener. And dare I say, some people never achieve that. So uh, Alex, congratulations to you for making a difference in the lives of the folks uh, through music. Um, we are truly proud of you. And I believe you've got somebody there who's going to be pinning you this evening as well? Yes. Excellent. Do you want to introduce this special person? This is my mom and troop leader. Excellent. Welcome, mom and troop leader. Thank you for your support. Of, uh, I know that it, it takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of time and a lot of encouragement, so thank you. Oh, that's a, thank you so much. Oh. And Marcy, they have somebody all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, sending their congratulations. I love it. <laughs> that's great. great. Oh, takes a village. It takes a village. That's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Let's welcome Jessica Short. Jessica is one of those projects that I've just been totally dazzled by, and I can say that with all humility as someone who's perpetually challenged with the technology. Um, I hear that you've developed an app for students, and Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I, what I did for my project was I created an educational app profile uh, for kindergartners through second grade. Uh, it covers a couple pages of um, iPad apps. Uh, in the various core subjects, such as math, science, uh, English, and literacy. Um, and actually, part of my project was testing, having some of the kids play test some of these apps. And I went to my local school and rounded up some kids of various grades, and they loved it. Where, where are you, uh, where did you, do, which school did you do that in, Jessica? In uh, the Albany School. Uh, Excellent. Yep. And this was yeah. uh, this was way before we thought we our world would revolve around apps and technology. Yeah. So you you yeah. were you were strategic in your thinking about that. Uh, I knew all along this was coming. <laughs> and how do you think you'll use this uh, moving forward in your life? Well, um, I think just being open to like expanding my knowledge of what's out there you know not just talking apps but you know other subjects other topics just really expanding my knowledge base and seeing how i can apply that to other parts of my life well that that sense of wonder and exploration will will be positive in whatever way that you you use it so we congratulate you it looks like there there may be a grown up behind you that um dare i say is mom <laughs> this is my mother and troop leader okay wonderful well congratulations mom and troop leader and we thank you for doing the honors thank you It's not as easy as you think it is. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Jessica. A round of applause for you and uh, the future that you have in front of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. Our next Gold Award honoree this evening is Lizzie King. Lizzie, go ahead and unmute yourself. I, this is another person I feel like I've watched grow up uh, as a longtime member of the Youth Leadership Council. And, um, and it wasn't that long ago when you were uh, on the stage um, facilitating this, our annual meeting. I thank you for that. And my memory is, is that you were doing it on crutches. Uh, and so uh, you just leaned in and did what you needed to do to, um, to, uh, to, to step up. And, and I've always admired that about you. 
Lizzie is also the recipient of, of a Badgerland Envision scholarship in the amount of $1,000 that will go towards her college education. So Lizzie, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hey, oh, it's good to see you. Uh, you too. <laughs> Tell us about your project. So a long passion of mine has been hockey. So it was natural for me to combine hockey and Girl Scouts for my gold award. So I renovated an unused room at my local hockey rink that is now used by young teams and high school teams for off-ice workouts and watching film. So they learn how to get better together as a team and they can also use the, worm to, the room to work out off-ice. Excellent. Another example of a leader and a Girl Scout and, a, and an athlete and somebody who just is about service to others. Lizzie, where are you going to school this, uh, this fall? I will be going to UW-Milwaukee, but I will be living at home. <laughs> okay, all right. Another example of uh, life going a little bit different direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we congratulate you. We know that you will do so well. Thank um, you. What, what is your, uh, have you declared your major yet? Yes, English education, and then I'm going to minor in journalism. Well, you can't go wrong with that. The world, the world needs people who are passionate about what they do, and I know you'll be successful, Lizzie. We congratulate you um, on your gold award. Is there anybody there that can pin you? There isn't, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do so in abstention, and uh, and when when you get the pin, put it on, and know that uh, all of us are behind you clapping. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck to you. We're, we're you. very proud of you. Thank you so much. It's now time to convene the annual meeting, and Maggie Utterback, our board chair, will take it from here. Hello, fellow Girl Scouts. What a bittersweet evening this is for me. As your board chair, this is my final meeting. I have served the full limit of the term that I can serve in my volunteer role, um, but it's been just a tremendous pleasure to serve as board chair of Badgerland Council. I've had the chance to witness the true leadership of young, brave, bold, successful Girl Scouts, like the ones we just met. And every time I get to hear from, from them and hear about what they can achieve, I really have a strong sense of understanding of what we can achieve together. And also <laughs> renewed hope for tomorrow, knowing that these girls and others like them are going to be at the lead. We're in good hands. Before we get started on the annual meeting, I want to go through a quick reminder on how all of it works. Here's uh, the list of folks who will be voting tonight. It's the 2019-2020 Board of Directors and Badgerland Council delegates who will be voting on all of the motions and election slates. Those names are all listed on the screen. Everyone listed is a voting member for the meeting. Now, in an ordinary world, we would be voting with a chorus of ayes and nays. However, in this Zoom meeting, that's just a little too challenging. So here's how we're going to do it. For each vote, we'll put up a poll that looks like this. And we're going to practice voting. So the 31 of you who are voting members, please cast a vote now, just to understand how that's going to work. Okay, go ahead and vote. And now the results are being tallied. And there they are. So a majority of us have not had a chance to go camping this year. That is a bummer. We need to hopefully be able to go camping soon. Maybe we can do some winter camping. So we're gonna present the motions by voice. And if you're making the motion, please unmute yourself and state your name and the motion. That's really important so that we have an accurate record of who made the motion. And similarly, when I ask for seconds, because the mute function can have a little delay on it, we're going to handle seconds in the chat log. So if you would like to chat to, to second a motion, then please just put in your name, say I, Maggie Utterback, second this motion. We've got an example in the chat log now, so you can see what that looks like. Does that sound like a plan? I hope, because that's what we need to do. 
So I don't usually carry a wooden spoon to official functions, but pandemics require innovation. So this is now a gavel. I now call to order the 2020 meeting of the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council. We begin by adopting the standing rules in place for the meeting. They're now on your screen and they were provided to you in a confirmation email for your review and before you logged on to this. They're in place to make sure that the meeting is appropriately observed and that we follow the rules that we need to follow to have good order. I move the adoption of the standing rules for the 2020 annual meeting of the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council be approved by voting. Is there a second? Thank you, Dawn. We have a second. I will ask you now to vote on the adoption of the standing rules for 2020 by casting a ballot in this poll. Okay, I'll take a couple of minutes for the votes to be tallied. Hundred percent. Way to go, Girl Scouts. At this time, we're going to review the credentials for this meeting. Our board member, Kristen Schmidt, will present the credentials. Kristen? As yep. As a member of the board of directors, I hereby certify that we have achieved a quorum for this meeting with 23 delegates present. Terrific. Thank you. The minutes from the 2019 Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council annual meeting have been distributed. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the 2019 annual meeting minutes? You can unmute to make that motion, just as a reminder. I, Kristen Schmidt, make a motion to approve the 2019 meeting, annual meeting minutes. Right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Is there a second? Please type it in the chat. Thank you, Jenny. We have a second. So now please cast your ballot in this poll. And we'll take a minute for the results to be tallied. The motion to approve the minutes has passed. So thank you for that. We'll now move on to elections. The Board of Directors serves as the governing body for the Girl Scout Council. We provide strategic oversight and make key policy decisions. Some of the primary responsibilities of the board include ensuring that we fulfill the requirements to be chartered as a unit of Girl Scouts of the USA, provide financial oversight to management, support a culture of philanthropy, employ the CEO, and advocate for the Girl Scouts to ensure that the council is positioned to achieve maximum benefit for all girl members. Nominees for new members of the board serving two-year terms are Jennifer Helberg and Nicole Sandoval. I move for the election of this slate on behalf of the nominating committee for the Board of Directors of Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland. Please note that because this motion comes from a committee, it does not require a second. So we'll go ahead to a vote. And the motion to elect Jennifer and Nicole has passed, so thank you. The following are nominated for re-election to the Board of Directors to serve two-year terms. Sean Bielmeyer, Rochelle Brown, Jenny Hallett, Annette Helmer, and Kristen Schmidt. I move for election of this slate for the Board of Directors of Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland. Again, please note, we do not need a second for this vote. So please vote. All in favor say aye, opposed vote nay.
And the motion to reelect Sean, Rochelle, Jenny, Annette, and Kristen has passed. Thank you. The following individuals are nominated to serve as officers of the board of directors for one year terms. They are the chair of the board, Kristen Schmidt, her vice chair, Kelly Thompson, her secretary, Kate Harold Ginger, and for treasurer, Annette Helmer. We now vote on the slate of officers for election. All in favor, please vote aye. Opposed, vote nay. The ayes have it and the motion carries, thank you. Four members of the board of directors will begin the second year of their existing two year terms. They are Heather Andrew, Kate Harold Ginger, Kelly Thompson and Alex Izquierdo. I invite all of the members of the board of directors including our newest Nicole and Jennifer to wave hello so we can welcome you. Thank you board members for your volunteer service. It's very important. The role of Badgerland Council delegates is to represent the voice of the members. Delegates vote at the annual meeting and meet regularly throughout the year. The delegates serve as both sounding boards and advisors to the CEO and COO on matters of importance regarding council operations. The wide ranging topics discussed this past year include program considerations, product sales, summer camp, membership growth initiatives, adult development, volunteer training and volunteer recognition, diversity outreach, and as well, many other relevant issues that are important to girls, parents, and volunteers. The following individuals are nominated as new members of the Badgerland Council delegates serving two-year terms. Carrie Jo Blanick Ackerman, Jesse Finn, Megumi Wolf. I move for the election of this slate for the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council delegates. Once again, this motion does not require a second, so let's vote. All in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. And the motion to elect Corey, Jesse, and Megumi has also passed. Thank you. The following people are nominated for re-election to the Badgerland Council delegates to serve two-year terms. Stephanie Buskey, Nicole Kaufman, Carrie Zerwanka, Kim Morris, Don Schultz, and Dee Smith. I move for the re-election of this slate for the Badgerland Council delegates of Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland. Again, no second is required, so let's vote. All in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. And the motion passes. Stephanie, Nicole, Carrie, Kim, Don, and Dee have been reelected as returning delegates. Thank you. These members of the Badgerland Council delegates join the following Badgerland Council delegates who are serving existing terms. Lori Ashenbrenner, Katie Beverly, Pat Coyne, Heather Jones, Becky Jordan, Anna Levia, Cheryl Robinson, and Lee Schmidt. I invite all of our Badger Council delegates, both current and newly elected members to wave. Thank you for your leadership. We couldn't do this without you. In October, the National Con Council Session of Girl Scouts will convene. The National Council is the governing body of Girl Scouts and is con pro comprised of delegates from each Girl Scout Council. The following individuals are recommended as Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council delegates to the National Council session and will serve a three year term that concludes September 30th, 2023. They are Katie Beverly, Carrie Zawanka, who is the alternate, Marcy Henderson, Anna Levia, Kathy Peterson, Cheryl Robinson, Kristen Schmidt, and Taylor Spengenbull. Do I hear a motion to approve the national delegate slate as presented? Please remember to unmute. 
I, Don Scholes, um, make a motion to approve the slate as presented. Thank you, Don. This motion does not require a second as it comes from nominating committee, so let's vote. Again, in favor, vote aye, opposed, nay. And the motion carries and our national delegates are elected. I now invite all of our Badgerland National Council delegates to wave. Thank you so much for your leadership and for representing us at the National Council. Let's give them a round of applause. The treasurer's report is our next item on the agenda. John Parkin, the treasurer of the board, and Kim Toussaint, Badgerland Council's chief financial officer, will provide the Badgerland financial overview. John and Kim. John, are you muted? He's working to unmute. It's going to take like two minutes. Technical difficulty. Still muted, John. <gasps> you just had it. Had it? You got it. Oh. I'll have to hold the bar down. Okay. For some reason, it won't otherwise work. So while I am unmuted, let me uh, do a quick summary before we get into it. Uh, for those of you who don't remember ancient history, right after our formation as a council, we had some years that were quite a financial struggle. And in modern times, we've uh, done much better, though I'll get into the challenges we have now. Uh, for that, we can certainly thank our, our financial people, including Kim, who's in there now. But throughout all of this, I, because this is my last go around as your treasurer, I, I certainly want to thank Marcy for really having a, a forward look to want to make this council a going thing. So just to give you a background before we get in there, uh, obviously, what's happened with what's going on in the country has caused us to lose uh, revenue, lose some members. And so what I have in front of me as a handout uh, shows the last couple of actual years and a reminder that our budget year 2020 will end September 30th, so we don't have final numbers yet. But what we've done is we have a, when we were running 2018, 5.1 million revenue. 2019, 5.4. Our budget for this year was set at 4.9. We're looking at 4.2 million. And uh, the board today approved a budget for 2021 of 4.3 million in revenue with just a $277 margin of income over expenses. So with that, we'll go through the slides. Okay, here you can see the historic ones and you can see the trend. We, we were peaking and uh, we definitely did very well on product sales. And I always try to remember who brings in the big revenue in Badgerland and that's the girls who sell those cookies. So saying it again, thank you to all of you who sell those cookies. And uh, you can see as we go exactly what uh, the expenses are used for over time. Uh, program, it's the staff that helps us with it, our summer camp. And you can see that uh, the way 2019 looked in the end showed a, a slight uh, negative balance. Next slide. Uh, this is more of a graphic display and uh, Again, remember 2019 ended last September 30th, but it shows you dramatically on the left one what, what our sale of cookies contributes. 81, almost 82% of our total income. 
Then we get service fees and we try to keep fees as low as we can so all the girls can be involved. You can see with time the shrinking United Way contributions and then it, investment and, and miscellaneous uh, income. Then on the right, you can see 85% of this going to program services, 10% uh, to general and management, and 4.6% on fundraising. Next slide. Okay, looking again, what I sort of summarized when we started, you can see uh, what's going on. And I, I guess an explanation for the estimate at the end of this year, as opposed to just a report on last year, we are estimating depending on the CARE grant that we receive from the federal program to keep people employed. Uh, if that is not credited, right now we're sort of carrying it off on the side because theoretically it might have to be paid back. It would show a possible 29K loss. Uh, if in fact it is a grant, which I and others suspect it will be, then we would actually be in the black. But it did permit us to keep people on the payroll as was the intent when Congress and the president signed it and passed it to us. So 2021 budget, which I said has just been approved, uh, gives you an example of a revenue of, of the 4134, and you can see product sales in there uh, are predicted as, as definitely less than back in 2018. Uh, going down uh, investment income, we tried to be very careful with as the stock market's in pretty strong fluctuation. And expenses, it shows you again, uh, 2018 went up 2019, and we've had to cut cents, as I mentioned on on a previous statement. Next slide. Here's a uh, projection that's kind of dramatic, though it doesn't go back as far as the really bad years. <laughs> but it shows you that starting in 2015, at least, we started to cover our expenses. And because uh, we don't have large investment balances. And, and each year since we were able to do that, uh, the 2021 budget shows you trying to break even. One of the questions that's shown on the screen is, do we know our, our United Way contributions? And of course, they have tended down over time. And I think uh, last year, basically, one of our United Way zeroed us out. So we're, we're not 100% sure, but we've been very conservative on, on what we're budgeting. Uh, next slide. Okay, so that gets us to a point of, uh, are you willing to accept our financial report? But first, are, are there any questions that anyone would like to give me that I, I haven't seen on the screen? It being very quiet, basically, I will bring the motion forward to accept our financial reports. Okay making sure I'm unmuted. Um, so because this motion comes from the Finance Committee, there is no need to, to second it. Um, so let's go ahead and vote on the motion to approve the financials. If you're in favor, say aye. Opposed, vote nay. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> okay, the motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Marcy at this point. Thanks, Maggie. So just a little bit ago, we uh, nominated uh, and voted upon national delegates annually in the fall. This year in October, Girl Scouts of the USA will hold the 55th National Council session. Every three years, the National Board of Directors is joined by delegates from the 111 councils. In fact, from other Girl Scout and Girl Guide Council or societies from around the world. It's really an international event. And this year we were so looking forward to that. They, uh, the folks come together, talk about important things, talk about the future of Girl Scouting, talk about uh, important decisions that help govern the movement. 
at Badgerland, we had big plans to have a huge presence scheduled to be in Orlando. And, you know, honestly, who doesn't want to go to Orlando and to do so with a Girl Scout convention just makes it all that much more powerful. We had a lot of troops that have been saving their uh, funds for a couple of years. We had uh, girls that were anxiously looking forward to funding their trip through cookies and other ways uh, to be together with their Girl Scout sisters in Orlando. And of course, um, that's, uh, that's not happening. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, we, we kind of swallowed our, our, the lump in our throat and recognized that we had to do what we could do. And, and so that's what we're doing. We're having a virtual co uh, conference this year. We know it won't be the same, but we're going to do all that we can uh, to make it powerful and engaging and uh, an important reminder that we are uh, part of an international movement uh, through the Girl Scouts of the USA. Tonight, I am honored to have one of the governing uh, members of the board of directors with us this evening. Sue, Sue Majors is on the, um, the National Board of Governors and, and uh, has been so for a couple of years. Uh, Sue uh, lives most of the year in a beautiful part of California, but she summers in a beautiful part of Wisconsin near Lake Geneva. Sue, are you with us? I'm with you, absolutely. Thank you for the nice, thank you. Um, I'm zooming from beautiful Lake Delavan, Wisconsin. We've owned a, a home here for 25 years, and I am very proud to be a, a Wisconsin part of the time. And, um, and thank you so much. Your remarkable leadership, your council has been one of my favorites. And uh, tonight to see your dedicated leadership, um, Maggie is outgoing chair, Kristen is incoming chair, congratulations. Um, and um, your amazing CEO, Marcy, Anyway, thank you for extending this. I just wanted to, um, to say I am a very proud volunteer. I am, it's a, a great privilege to have been elected to serve an organization that continues the work of fearless trailblazing women um, who've helped transform our institution into the inspirational powerhouse girl-led organization it is today. So uh, I am very proud to be a member of the National Board, just finishing my first term, three years, you can serve at the national level three three-year terms. Um, I'm standing for re-election, so I will see some of you again and your delegates, I'll need your support. Um, but I just wanted to say um, just a little bit about uh, me as a Girl Scout, what made me want to join the national board. Um, my, I'm third generation Girl Scout. My mom was, uh, as many of you probably in the audience, my mom was my leader um, and then, um, when uh, I had a, a daughter, uh, she became a Girl Scout and she was a Silver Award Girl Scout. So didn't, wasn't as accomplished as some of these wonderful women on the phone tonight, uh, but loved every moment of, of Girl Scouting. And, um, and my fellow board members who are equally as passionate um, are, uh, are wonderful. And there's 30 of us, so 29 of my, uh, my fellow board members. Um, I'm going to see some of you again, your delegates, because they're uh, on the, there is a Meet the Candidate webinar scheduled for September, one on September 12th, one on September 14th. So we will um, be on a webinar introducing ourselves and our background. And don't be surprised, I'm going to be wearing my sash again, because it's one of the things that makes me feel so good about Girl Scouts. Um, and now I know it's at the, towards the end of the meeting. So I do want to just give you a quick bullet updates on what we're doing. And the first, um, many of them have been talked about tonight. And I'm sure, Marcy, you might have talked about them in other times. But basically, one of the, the, th the good things that have come out of COVID-19 uh, COVID is that we have gone 100% virtual. And it was a Herculean effort at the national and at your council level, I know. And so Girl Scouts at Home is, has um, been in, instituted and we're connecting online and girls are so good at this technology and it will continue to. Um, regarding the cookie program, wanted to mention that yes, it was disrupted and that's two thirds of our funds, of our revenue for all of our councils. So, um, and worse than that, there was 50 million in, in inventory that were in people's homes uh, when this happened. So what did we do? Well, we, um, in the course of nine days, we launched a cookie care website, uh, 
Girl Scouts Cookie Care, the website, ran for nine weeks and we made nine million back for the movement. And we also gave a lot of cookies um, uh, and donated them to uh, first responders. So it was a, it ended out to be ended up to be a wonderful thing and really gained us valuable knowledge and what might we might come up against this next year. Um, you mentioned Girl Scouting in the beginning on the vote, uh, Maggie, that um, a lot of people didn't go scouting. And that's really so sad because it's one of the best memories ever for me. But the good news is that there were so many virtual camp experiences. Again, we're learning, we're gathering information. There are some incredible things nationwide that have uh, that we will share and all the councils will share with each other for virtual campouts or camp ins. And um, and then touching on the national um, the national council session. Oh my gosh, I was so looking forward to those rides in uh, Orlando and um, and seeing everybody. Actually, that's the most important thing. But we are embracing a spirit of innovation and. Now we are, we are gonna have the first virtual council session ever. So you delegates, you are making history. And there'll be over a thousand delegates with the most girl delegates ever this year. So um, that will be an incredible weekend for us as we, uh, at the end of October. And last, I wanna mention that there are, that um, girls, GSUSA and all the councils strongly believe in the value of black lives. We have been going through a challenging time as a nation and we at GSUSA, we are forming a board level uh, diversity, equity and inclusion task force that's going to work to dismantle systemic racism and create an organization that works for all girls. And so we're very excited about that. Um, looking ahead, we don't have a crystal ball, and I know, John, you don't either. <laughs> I just heard that. But we are at Girl Scouts, we're working together in an unprecedented way. We want you to feel supported. We want you to know we care. We care about Badgerland. We want to create things for you so that templates, so that all the councils can benefit and spend time on the important things. So hopefully, recruitment, fund development, other programs, th there will be more and more support as well as programs. So as usual, girls are leading the way in creating new opportunities to give back during a time in their lives that is so difficult. So thank you to the girls and thank you. Badgerland is a council, I think, that reflects the best of the movement. So thank you for all of your support of Girl Scouts and I am so proud to have been a part of this meeting. You um, and hope to see you sometime in person. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, Sue. Really appreciate your support and your leadership as you serve on the on the National Board of Directors and look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So the purpose of this meeting is many, and one of them is to um, not just welcome people as we've been doing um, most recently, but also to say goodbye. It's a time of transition. Um, it was just three years ago that we on, that we uh, voted upon three Badgerland delegates to represent us um, at the national uh, meeting that was in Columbus. Um, so. Uh, Susanna Gustafson, Sarah Patterson, and Jen Roman all joined Maggie and myself representing Badgerland at the, at the meeting in Columbus. And we thank you for your three years of service and that your participation on the Badgerland Council delegates as well. Megan Skrpinski is also uh, rolling off the board and the four folks here have been just invaluable resources for the Badgerland team. They bring energy, ideas, they are a voice that is both respectful and deserves and to be heard. And we thank you so much for what you've done as troop leaders, as parents, as working professionals, as program uh, participants, and just as some of the best people that I've ever had a chance to meet. So thank you so much for your service and your dedication to Badgerland Girl Scouts. We will totally miss you. We also say goodbye at this time to four directors, board of directors, uh, Kevin Anderson will be leaving us after his first two year term as the science education consultant. 
for the Wisconsin Department of Public Service uh, and instruction, public instruction. Kevin just brought terrific insight and ideas to the table. You all know that STEM is a key focus for Girl Scouts. Um, and so his insight was, was truly valuable. He's also a Girl Scout dad and his perspective on, on programming uh, impact and delivery was invaluable. Kevin, we will really miss you. Debbie Wyora was on the board of the Blackhawk Council and then returned to the Badgerland board five years ago. During that time with us, she's been an invaluable leader of the audit committee. When she joined us, she was an accountant at Smith and Jesslyn and Smith and Jesslyn then became BDO. And we have so valued the leadership that she provided to both Linda Pulse Fleming and Kim Toussaint. She's a calm, steady voice and always has a smile. Debbie, we will certainly miss you. John Parkin, you heard just a bit ago from John. John has the distinction of being involved in both Girl Scouting and Boy Scouting. He will be the first to tell you that he has been involved as in Girl Scouting for almost 40 years, which is a really, really long time. I love his fresh perspective as he thinks forward, but also his appreciation of our history. He has served as our board treasurer for many years, brought knowledge, integrity, and always a smile. John, we will truly miss you. Maggie. We've been through a lot together and I thank you for your leadership. The fact that you always can make people feel valued and appreciated. I know you're a strong proponent of what Girl Scouting does. You've helped Badgerland so much through your connections, through your leadership, through your just solid, strong sense of self. Your compassion as we've worked on negotiations and been there for the communities has made such a difference to me personally and to the other members of the board, and dare I say, the entire Badgerland Council. Maggie, would you like to say a few words? Well, yeah, but you made me cry. <laughs> um, so I wanna say thank you to Badgerland Council, to my fellow directors, to the staff, and especially to Marcy. This has been such a wonderful journey. Um, it's It's been an honor to serve and a joy. I, I have really gained so much from my service as a board member. And it's wonderful to see the amazing things that our girls can accomplish when they are given support and they're able to exercise their own talents in such amazing ways. I am so inspired by all of you and I wanna thank you for that. Uh, I, I leave Gold Award meetings every year just bouncing because it is such a wonderful demonstration of everything that you're capable of. Um, this has been just terrific. As Marcy said, we've had some challenges and we've been through a lot together and I wouldn't have missed a minute of it. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Maggie, John, Kevin, and Debbie. We'll miss your special sauce on the board of directors. <laughs> it's now my rule to provide a state of the council. <clears throat> what a year it's been. Um, in honor of the time, I am going to abbreviate my remarks. Um, but I want to begin by saying we began the year full of hope and energy and we had as a theme of the council to 2020 and beyond. We did some pretty significant changes last fall um, in programming and in staffing and in the ways that we provide service to our leaders. And we were off to a pretty solid start. We had a good fall uh, sale program. We had 15% uh, uh, new members, 15% uh, more new members than we had the year before. We were hearing positive things from the programming that we were offering. We launched an amazing cookie program at the same time that we opened up uh, summer 2020. We were experiencing 20% growth over uh, for our camp, and, um, and we were pretty excited that a number of sessions were already sold out in the first part of March. And then, as you know, the world turned upside down, and, um, and that required us to do what Girl Scouts do, and that's pivot. And it did take us a little bit longer 
than we thought that we would, but we worked really hard to be able to say yes in a time when there were so many no's out there. As, you've, as you know, many of you were a part of the success that we did virtual programming. And I will be the first to say, as proud as I am of that virtual programming, it is way different than being at the campfire with your friends, singing a song together, experiencing what it really feels like to hold a worm or to uh, you know, build a unicorn with a whole bunch of other people. It was just different. But, but that's, the way that, that's the way that we're living right now, isn't it? So we, uh, at Badgerland, we offered more than 2,700 virtual programs this year. <clears throat> Excuse me, we had 2,700 people, girls, some adults, mostly girls, participate in those virtual programs. 2,700 programs would have been a lot, but 2,700 girls and adults is the number that I meant to say. We had uh, more than 1,600 girls participate in our sneak peek summer. So again, they learned about magic, they learned about fairies, they learned about unicorns, they learned how to, to explore shipwrecks in, uh, in the Great Lakes, as well as ex experience what it meant to build robots. They had um, STEM opportunities and they were learning from some amazing people, including a, a, a Girl Scout from Madison who was on the Olympic rowing team who was supposed to be in Japan when she was talking with, uh, with our girls. Um, and so amazing opportunities that they might not otherwise have had. And the engagement and the back and forth of the girls as they made act did activities and, and saw one another and created new friends, even, even virtual. And I think that's a testament to who our girls are. They crave the opportunity to be with one another, but they also appreciate what it is that we can provide in this new world that they're a part of. And that's been recognized. Sue acknowledged the, the role of GSUSA. It's also true that um, we're being honored and celebrated by others. Parent Magazine last week recognized the Girl Scouts as the, as the number one after school activity for, um, for this country, for the work that we've done over the last several months to be there for the girls. And that's the challenge that we have moving forward. And that's what we need to do. We need to be looking at where we're going, appreciating and understanding as we've been acknowledging that we don't exactly know when we'll all be back together. We don't know what that will look like, but we know that the girls need what we offer at Girl Scouts. They need the opportunity to learn they need the opportunity to be um, in a space where they can create. They need the support of the adults in their lives. They're eager to embrace things like the out of doors and science and racial justice and how to be an advocate. We're proud that we've implemented this summer a whole new set of badges. This doesn't replace what's out there, but builds upon it. So it's not just the virtual opportunities, but the badge work. And we're very excited at Badgerland. We've worked really hard. As, um, as you've heard acknowledged, we will um, be doing so with fewer staff and acknowledgement of the budget. That was an exceedingly uh, difficult thing to do earlier in the month as we said goodbye to a quarter of our team. These are people that worked really hard to provide amazing experiences for girls throughout the years. Um, and it was a real challenge uh, to, to, to say goodbye as we embrace our, our, our new way of work. And we're excited about what we can do moving forward. In fact, we have a theme called Bold, Ambitious, and Successful. I want to do a shout out that we can only do this when we all come together. Our vision is that we lock arms. If we were in person, we'd be sharing a friendship circle shortly and providing an opportunity for the squeeze to go around and celebrating who we are as Girl Scouts. And we can't do that in the world that we, that we are a part of right now, but we can do it with our hearts. We can do it with our soul. We can do it in concept as we work to build a better world, as we work to unite rather than divide, as we work to make a difference for the girls for the grown-ups and for the community. I thank you for being on this journey. There are so many amazing leaders on this call. We have a lot of work to do. We've done a lot of work and together we will make a difference. Thank you for your support. Maggie, over to you. Thanks, Marcy.
At this time, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn the 2020 annual meeting of the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Badgerland Council. Mark and motion to adjourn. Thank you, John. And Cheryl Robinson second it. Thank you, Cheryl. All in favor? Please vote aye. And if there's anyone opposed, please vote nay. And the ayes have it. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Before you go, we have uh, one uh, uh, opportunity to uh, celebrate a person that's on this call. On Tuesday, we honored and celebrated nine volunteers as well as a community group for the support and the engagement that they have in Girl Scouting. This evening, we celebrate a business that has provided special support. Every year, we provide, uh, we provide to a business or a corporation the Badgerland Partnership Award. And this year, it goes to C.G. Schmidt. This is a surprise, I believe, Kristen. So I hope you're, uh, I hope you're feeling the love right now. C.G. Schmidt is a fourth generation family owned Wisconsin construction business dedicated to making our communities better. For the past several years, the firm has partnered with the Badgerland Council to provide invaluable expertise as we've worked on improving our properties. Construction, as you may know, is a traditionally, it's a, it's a male dominated industry, but thanks to efforts like Girl Scouts and companies like C.G. Schmitz, the door is wide open for females to explore any and all opportunities. I am especially proud that our new board chair, Kristen Schmidt, who is the business development director for C.G. Schmidt, is going to accept the award. Thank you, Kristen, for the work that you've done on the Woodworker Badge. Thank you for the improvements that you've helped facilitate at our most popular camp, Brandenburg. Thank you for the leadership that you've demonstrated personally and on behalf of the company for the properties and just for being all an all around amazing person. Congratulations, Kristen. Before we conclude this evening, I have an important question to ask of each one of you. How will you help carry the Girl Scout message forward? What I'd like you to do is think about what you're doing to make sure that every girl from every walk of life, from every zip code, from every background knows about Girl Scouts, knows the opportunities that are available through this worldwide organization. I ask you to think about how you can be a recruiter and a supporter for girls that need us right now. I'm going to take just a minute here to reflect on that and then I'd like you to put it in the chat log. But here's, and this part is, is important. Don't hit send quite yet. So Sarah, can you repeat the directions for me, please? Absolutely, Marcy, this is my favorite. End our party with some popcorn, right? We can't go out better than that. And so this is great. Yes, reflect on the question and put it in the chat log. And then on the count of three, we'll all hit enter when I say three and it's gonna pop in the chat log like popcorn and I'll read a couple and, and then we'll dive into a really great video. So count of three, ready? Then you'll hit enter. One, two, three, enter. Pop, 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 popcorn. A couple of ones I'm seeing is remind other adults about Girl Scouts. It's more than just buying cookies, right? Cookie supports. There's more to that. Share the experience. Encourage girl power. Invite friends to join, right? Spread the word. Communicate the impact. As we said, bold, ambitious. Communicate that impact. So with that, thank you so much for all of those that you put in there. With that, I'd love to turn it over to show us a reminder of what our Badgerland girls are doing. I've been getting so much done. You know what they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonades.
Nothing Stops Girl Scouts. Thank you for joining us for this special event. We thank you. We send, we send our full support and encouragement to all of you to be strong, emboldened women so that we can grow a generation to follow in our footsteps as well. Thanks everybody.